Thank you. And I think you all are very lucky to have a wonderful wellness champion who puts these events on for you and schedules this whole month of, of activities to help with your mental health. And that is our topic today. Um, our presentation is going to be led by our dietetic student from Kaiser University today. But before she gets started, I'm going to let uh, Nurse Mimi with United Healthcare say a few words. Thank you so much, Carly. Hello, everyone. My name is Mimi, and I am the nurse liaison for the Palm Beach County School District with United Healthcare. I am so glad and excited to see each and every one of you. And I'm so glad to participate in this seminar. We are about to get some great, great nutritional tips about the, I mean, we're gonna, we're about to learn the connection between uh, nutrition and our mental health today. We're gonna get some great nutritional tips from Lauren Underwood, our presenter for today. I'm excited to be here. I would like to remind you that I am at the district every Thursday from 8.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have any questions, regarding health or you have any health issue you would like to discuss with a medical professional or if you would like to know the great resources that we have at United Healthcare to help you stay healthy, please reach out to me. You can either call me or you can uh, uh, send me an email. My flyers are everywhere and I'll be more than happy to assist you. Now, without any further ado, I would like to present to you our wonderful Lauren Underwood. Mm -hmm. Lauren, take, take it over. Thank you. I don't know about the wonderful part. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you, ladies, for joining us today. It's good to have you. I'm hoping you'll all be very engaging and communicative, so it's not just me talking. <laughs> As Mimi said, I am a Kaiser student. I am going to start sharing my screen with you. Um, can everyone see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Actually, I'm seeing Carly, I guess. That's the one we're sharing. Today. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, Carly and I are kind of uh, doing a team effort here. <laughs> now it's giving me a hard time. No, it's, it's rubbing off on me. Give me a second. Um, <laughs> Give me an option for that. I have also put Nurse Mimi's email address in the chat box if you wanted to have a way to contact her. It is there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So here in this uh, first slide, I just wanted to kind of, when I think mental health, I think of a book I read that was really kind of life changing for me when I read it. It's one of the best books I've ever read. And it came to me through my doctor when I was discussing diet and I had first started my dietetics program. And I was having a lot of like gut symptoms that I'd never had for the first time in my life. And she recommended this book to me and I could not put it down. It just, it made so much sense, like how our bodies really not just equipped physical um, and how we feel, but like mentally and that connection, how they go in unison. So I, don't know if any of you have read this book. If you have, please speak up and tell me your thoughts. But I just loved how it gave the component of the gut and how it really plays into our mental health and our mood, our emotions, and even um, like any illnesses we have, whether it's mental illness or physical illnesses. Um, so. I really recommend that book if you're a reader and you would like more information about it, I'd be happy to talk with you after today's um, session. Okay, and then the next slide is going to be a little kind of icebreaker combining nutrition and humor. Um, just a funny approach because who doesn't love to laugh? <laughs> 
So we're going to play this um, YouTube clip for you. If it'll work for us. <laughs> We don't hear any it. sound. Yes. Yeah, no sound. This is fun. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Maybe someone's good at lip reading. Okay, hold on. Let me try something else. I try to keep my nutrition advice simple for people. I try to keep, I say, first, you got to choose healthy foods right? Choose healthy foods. That's the first thing. And everybody needs a little bit, uh, you know, varying levels of education on what's healthy and what's not. But for me personally, I don't need a lot of red meat, but when I do, I'm trying to choose buffalo, bison. That's probably not as common around it. In Colorado, that's on menus. You get buffalo burger because it's leaner than beef and more omega-3, so it's a better choice, right? So I'm trying to eat more buffalo. Uh, I love the wings. Those are fantastic. If you fry up a few dozen of those. You dip them in blue cheese, and that's a healthy midnight snack right there. But uh, uh, we got to determine, you know, what's healthy and what's not healthy. Here's an unlikely source of education. I've got three little kids at home, three little kids. They watch Sesame Street. Cookie Monster, if you haven't watched in a while, Cookie Monster is healthy now, folks. Cookie Monster said, me want a carrot. Right? Yes. So his grammar still sucks, but at least... He's eating better, right? And you'll be happy to know that Oscar is no longer as grouchy. He's been on Zola for a few years. <laughs> Big Bird, though, still juicing. He's enormous. Still on the PEDs, the steroids. So that was sad to see. But, uh, but we got to choose. Uh, choose uh, what did we, how did we used to know what was healthy or not? The, uh, the current students might not even know what this is. The, they used to teach this in school. If you're my age or older, you remember it was the food pyramid do you remember the food pyramid and it was the the triangle diagram with the horizontal categories and you would eat very little of the sweets and the treats up top and a lot of the good stuff at the base right that was the food pyramid and then they changed it like 20 years ago they changed it and they gave it uh vertical categories because everybody knows it's those vertical stripes that make you look slimmer right <laughs> It was a fashion decision, purely, by the USDA. That's all it was. And it didn't work. And so then they changed it again. About 10 years ago, they changed it again. And what did they do? They made it a circle because they just gave up. And they said, let's make it the shape of obesity in this country. Let's, let's make it a big O for obesity. That's... No, what they did, it's now a, uh, a representation of your plate. Right? And I think it's once again a useful tool because it's a plate. It's a circular plate and they divide it up and half the plate is, is colorful fruits and vegetables and they show, and I think it's once again uh, useful. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> Just a little clip of some humor. I like his take on it. So um, today, these are some of the topics we're going to be covering in the PowerPoint is the effect of certain foods on our mental health, what foods to choose for good mental health, and how to eat for good mental health. And what is the definition of mental health? If you all had to say your own definition um, without it being pulled up by the CDC, which is very specific specific as we'll kind of read through, but it encompasses many different aspects when it comes to mental health. And those are our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, which affects how we think, feel, and act. And it determines how we handle or react to stress, relate to others, and make healthy choices. So that's a very specific definition. Um, and it's one that I think has become more and more talked about in the community now that there is so much recognition being kind of devoted to mental health, I guess, 
especially um, post COVID and a huge emphasis in the schools when I've been in the schools lately seems to be on mental health. And now they're tying in the nutritional component. So because I'm a dietetic student, it's fascinating for me. And I'm going to cover more the nutrition aspect, not so much mental because I'm not going into a mental health field really per se, but it is kind of correlated and tied together as we'll see. So in the next slide, let's talk about some effects of the food we choose on our mental health. So sugar and processed food lead to inflammation in the body and the brain. And what does inflammation mean? Does anyone want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. So inflam. Oh, sorry. Was someone going to talk? Nope. Go ahead. Okay. So inflammation um, is mainly connected to like the cells in the body, um, specifically that gut microbiome we were talking about. And certain foods can um, make it more difficult to digest and also the cells do the good immune function that we're going to talk about. And that's um, been the focus of research with two aspects. It reduces short chain fatty acids and reduces mucosal activity in the immune system. So our immune system being, you know, how our body responds to stress and sickness. And then short chain fatty acids does anyone know what short chain fatty acids are or long chain fatty acids are, what the difference is? No, but they both sound pretty bad. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. So the short chain fatty acids are actually good for us and that um, mucosal activity in the microbiome because those are from are non-digestible polysaccharides, which are found in um, fruits and vegetables, complex carbohydrates like whole grains and oats. So those are the good fatty acids and they help the good bacteria basically reproduce and do what they're supposed to in the gut, in the microbiome. Now, long chain fatty acids are more what someone just spoke up and said sound bad. And those are through more saturated fats. And the body breaks those down, I guess, where, well, maybe I shouldn't say where it's not processed as easy, but it's, it's not for the good bacteria in your gut. Um, so those are saturated, unsaturated, and found in most um, oils. Okay, and then in the next slide, um, nutritious choices lead to fewer mood swings and improved ability to focus. So a good quote I found from one of the studies was, the risk of depression increases about 80%. When you compare teens with the lowest quality diet or what we call our Western diet to those who eat a higher quality whole foods diet and the risk of ADD doubles. So that was a very, to me, kind of alarming statistic just in how much nutrition really matters. And another thing going back to the schools and being in the schools how i have been in the past is just it seems like add adhd um, depression all those numbers are going up and it's it's a wonder because when we compare our diet to years ago or, or eating a more you know wholesome nutrient dense foods it's very much correlated and from a research that I looked up as I was um, looking at various studies, um, serotonin was particularly one of the neurotransmitters that was affected. Does anyone know what serotonin is or what it controls in the brain? Happy. Mood. 
mood. Yeah. Happy. You're yes. Happy. <laughs> it's like an endorphin for mood. Yes. It's a mood stabilizer. Just like um, a lot of people know or reference dopamine as like the pleasure hormone and happy hormone serotonin as well um, plays into mood and also regulates sleep. So with serotonin, 95% of serotonin is produced in the gut. So no wonder how eating certain foods can make you more emotionally healthy. Also, on the other aspect, vice versa, unhealthy choices can make you feel terrible. <laughs> so I was just blown away by that 95%. So that's why I had to write that down. <laughs> Um, so we'll go on to the next slide. Now, nutrient dense foods, as we already kind of briefly talked about, can help with feelings of depression and anxiety. And according to the World Health Organization, depression could be one of the top health concerns in the world by 2030. So not just the U.S., but the world. And um, the highest therapeutic potential seen in the rational diet is physical activity, the use of psychobiotics, and consumption of antioxidants. What are psychobiotics? All right. Or what? That's the first time I've ever heard that word. Yes. I think it was one of my first times hearing it, but. So you think of like antibiotics, right? And yeah. Probiotics. Mm -hmm. So I, I would imagine it's related to the, those types of like um, biologic components in your gut that act on the mind as well. I don't know. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's. You said pretty much the almost exact definition. So it is, it's your body's natural kind of antibiotics and how that works together. A huge focus on pre and probiotics now because of that good gut bacteria. The more research that is being done is how we're seeing how this whole, they, they call and I think I got it from the mind gut connection, but like your stomach or your gut is like your second brain because it goes into the whole brain functioning cognitively, mood wise, and um, all those components. So good job. Thank you for answering that. Now, the next, the, Next thing with consumption of antioxidants is another thing, and that's in the next slide. What are antioxidants or those healthy foods that specifically help with reducing cell damage, aging in the body, including our brain? We all want to be younger, right? We're all want healthy, young, but just like our body, which is seen from the outside and exterior, nobody really thinks about the brain because we can't see that. <laughs> but your brain can be aging too. So the food we eat affects both. And here's some examples listed. I won't read each vegetable and fruit, but as you just go through the list, kind of mentally tell yourself which you think you might be lacking in your diet or which ones you really enjoy and eat frequently. Just as like a mental checklist, because it may be part of an activity later at the end of the session. And um, those antioxidants, once again, play into how our gut is functioning. And next we have omega-3 fatty acids. Now, the, there are ty three types of omegas. That's three sixes and nines. Does anyone know which two the body makes? And I'm sorry, which two the body doesn't make and which one the body does make? I kind of messed up my wording there. Probably from the slide, you can tell one of the 
three, but the body doesn't make. <laughs> So omega threes and sixes are from the foods we eat. So the body does not make those. However, they are influential and I'll come back to why omega nines are affected by threes and sixes. So the body does make the omega nines. So the omega threes are important because they improve that cognitive function and reduce risk of dementia or few, Alzheimer's eventually. And some good sources are the ones listed, including the pictures. And I did want to point out, I'll have to look um, at my notes here for a second. So as I was saying, the omega-9s are made from the body through fatty acids that are stored. You all remember how I was talking about the short chain and the long chain fatty acids? Those omega-9s are made through the body through the functioning of those as they're broken down in the gut. So <laughs> that was, um, you know, kind of, I guess, pertinent in both, even though the the omega nines aren't directly from the food we get. They're controlled by the threes and sixes. Okay. And then B12, the energy vitamin is what it's known for. I think B12 has gotten a lot of emphasis. I don't know if any of you have ever gotten the B12 shots um, or you're familiar with those. Um, and your take on it, but we're going to talk about the foods and how we get them and how they are important in cognitive function as well. So a report by Ramsey and Muskin published in Current Psychiatry in 2013 that you see there noted that low B12 levels and elevated homocysteine increases the risk of cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease and are linked to a five-fold increase in the rate of brain atrophy. What is brain atrophy? Does anyone know? Decay or decline? Yes. So, good answer. Was that Carly? <laughs> um, no, that was Nicole. Okay, thank you, Nicole. So, just like muscle atrophy and the loss of muscle tissue, brain atrophy is the decline or loss of nerve or neurons and connections that help them communicate in the brain tissues. So kind of like a good way to look at it when you think about muscle atrophy and versus brain atrophy. They're very similar connected in that. That's just how I remember the definition. So also B12 has an anti-inflammatory effect and inhibits apoptosis and they affect cell membrane function, brain derived neurotropic factor action and neurotransmitter reuptake. So that is a very um, medicine answer there. Um, what is apop ap I'm sorry. apoptosis? You might just need to answer the question, Lauren, because they're not going to. Yeah. Okay. Just... Um, all right. So that apoptosis is, is basically just like a trophy. It's where it's kind of just goes away and the loss of it, it deteriorates um, and it's not functioning anymore. Um, this occurs in stroke patients, Alzheimer's, traumatic brain injury, or those with multiple sclerosis. So it, any kind of food you can eat that prevents these um, ailments, illnesses, if you want to call them, is affected by our diet. That's how important it is. Um, so does anyone have anything they would like to add on the presentation before we get into an activity? Any questions? No. It has been very informative so far. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you. Um, Nicole also put something in the chat box. Um, she put follow up idea, inexpensive ideas, tips and tricks for a high quality whole food diet. Oh, okay. awesome. Maybe what we can do is have Lauren um, prepare something mm -hmm. yeah. and email it out. Yes, Absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. That would be great. Thanks. Because, you know, we're so often you go into a store and you're looking at fresh produce, fresh everything, all these high quality foods, and it, and it seems much more expensive. And when you when you talk about, you know, being able to have a whole food diet, everybody automatically goes to high price, like thinking high price. So it'd be really great to see how we might be able to do some of that incorporating more of those whole foods and high quality items into our diet without really impacting our pocketbook negatively. Yes. And I, I certainly, you know, have heard and sympathize myself because you, you go to some of these stores, whole foods, I'm, I'm going to reference because everything there just looks so good, so fresh. And then one bag is like $50. <laughs> so and driving down the road the other day on the interstate, I see free fry Friday. So it's like we're being told and shoved with the unhealthy food that's free and low cost. And, and then like the healthy food is such an exorbitant rate. So um, I will definitely follow up with everyone with some great resources about budgeting and still eating healthy and not compromising our health. Because in the long run, it is much more costly in the long run. And Paula has her hand up. So okay. I used to work in the organic uh, realm. And something that they used to say to me all the time was, you can buy organic and spend a little more on your food and less on your doctor. Or you can spend more on your doctor and eat food that is not good for you. So... That's a way when you're thinking that organic food's a little more expensive. There are certain foods, there's a top 10 that you should probably consider to be the ones to buy organic. Yes. Uh, thank you for that thought. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys saw me nodding, but I, I really think like that is perfectly said because when you go to the doctors, you're going to be paying out way more for your overall health than you will for a, a trip to the grocery store where you may have to budget a little and spend a little bit more. But, you know, we only get one body in this life. So why not take care of it? Um, and um, I realized the time I talk a lot. <laughs> So um, the last slide here is a little discussion to um, get some feedback. Type in the chat box your favorite healthy food and why. This I felt was like a good follow up and maybe some good ideas. If you want to, you know, do a little um, recipe or food combination, that's welcome too. can get in the chat box and do it myself. <laughs> oh, I'm loving the salmon, avocado, hummus. Those are all my favorites. <laughs> Strawberries too. Um, I have to think of more. I love kale. And it's a good time to be thinking about food now that it's lunchtime. <laughs> Yes to Aldi. Have um, any of you been to Trader Joe's? I love Trader Joe's. Yeah, Trader Joe's is the sister company to Aldi's, actually. And oh, um, I they do, I, I found, because I shop Aldi's all the time, and I go to Trader Joe's once in a while. They, they're 
Trader Joe's has some things that are actually considerably less than all these, but overall, um, it's probably all these is probably a little bit cheaper, but it's kind of you can almost take advantage of the the Trader Joe's um, less expensive items. If you buy the same things all the time, you notice the pricing, you know, the difference in the pricing. Yeah, so they, have, they have leaders, you know, in the Trader Joe's. So you pay a little more for some things, but the um, really overall, all these the fruits and vegetables are just so much cheap, less expensive. Yeah. Aldi is a little bit further of a drive for me. Plus, I, I think because if you guys can't already tell, I'm from Tennessee. But Trader Joe's was a new discovery and find, whereas we have Aldi where I'm from. So when I go to Trader Joe's, it was just like, oh, wow, I love this experience. <laughs> um, yeah, Sprouts has a lot of good stuff, too. It's just they're not as convenient to get to either. Yeah. Oh, and my last slide is my references. If you all really want to, you know, go to any of the statistics or things that I used it from this PowerPoint slide, feel free. There was tons of good information and I just couldn't put it all together on the PowerPoint. Um, okay. Any last questions? Car Carly, you'll be sharing. Can you share the PowerPoint with Absolutely. us Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yep. And this recording, Thanks. I'm going to put this recording onto our YouTube channel. So if, if Paula, if anybody missed it, they can catch the video. Okay. Thank you so much, Lauren. We really appreciate your taking the time to do this for us and um, for all the great information. And thank you, Carly and Charlotte, for 